What's up, everyone? This is the Go Along Podcast, and we are at Hamburg Brewing Company. And man, am I psyched for this episode. We have, I'm not sure how to introduce you, Tyrell. Do you, T-Dot, Tyrell T-Dot, 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 let's go, T-Dot, let's go, Tyrell, anything you want to do. I like it. We kind of have the same, so I get, I get Ty and I get Tyler about 50, 50. And I just, people can call me whatever. Are you kind of the same way? It's like, whatever, whatever you want to roll. Just don't call me out of my name. You call me whatever you want. Just don't call me out of my name. (laughs) How's life? And for those who don't know, this is a, gosh, you re-signed. So you're back for, for another year with the Buffalo Bills, linebacker, special teams, extraordinaire. Um, I think a lot of people probably saw you walking in shirtless, right, to the uh, the, the frigid wild card game against the Patriots. Um, just made a ton of plays on special teams, and and really like this is how it works in the NFL. Like you're you're cutting your teeth, you know, put putting in that work on special teams. Yeah. And maybe this is the year where you, you bust through, and we start seeing you, you know, knocking heads around on defense as well. But um, it's it's great to have you here. We'll just talk a little. Yeah, bit. man. Thanks for having me. Yeah. How is life? What's you up to these Man, days? Life's going good. You know, we're in the off season right now. Um, um, I've, I've just really been looking at, you know, different um, investment properties around like the United States, like, you know, Nashville or Houston, Texas, just, just like, you know, trying to keep me busy, you know, trying to put my money somewhere else, you know, other than the stock market, cause it's down and it's been down and it's going to keep on going down. Um, but other than that, man, I'm just, you know, um, really just, enjoying the off season because you know that season was kind of hectic a lot of ups and downs I think it's one of the most up and down season I think I've had you know in my career you know not only as in the NFL but I think in college and high school like especially when we had the potential that we did and stuff like that the talent and you know things don't go as well I mean things don't go as planned but you know it is what it is but um yeah I'm just traveling trying to trying to eat as much as possible before I get back to training full time. But yeah, man, life's going good, man. Yeah. It was an interesting season to say the least. Right. A few <laughs> yeah. Things that happened. <laughs> yeah, man. Jacksonville to 13. Oh my gosh. Yeah, man. Has the, uh, you know, has the pain subsided? No, the pain the won't be subsided. There. No, yeah, pain, pain. I think the pain's gonna be there for all fifty-three of us until we get back. You know what I'm saying? On that first game, you know. It's interesting, you know, because you see this in sports a lot. You know, whether it's the uh, I covered Green Bay uh, for a while with the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. They had that crazy ass game against the Seahawks in the NFC Championship game, where you know twenty things yep. have to go wrong for them to lose that game, and they still haven't really got, gotten over that that loss. Um, but then on the other side of the coin, if you want to look to another sport, I'm thinking of the Miami heat, San Antonio Spurs, right? Ray Allen hits that three in the corner Jeez. and it's, Oh my God. I mean, the Spurs had it. The trophy was out by the court and the heat win that game, the win game seven. I mean, it can really go one of two directions here mentally. You know, I've always kind of mocked the fact of one season leading into another. How does one season really have an effect on the other? But that kind of game, that kind of ending, it's going to have an effect. How, where, where, do, where do the Buffalo Bills go from here, you think? Uh, I think I, I honestly think we go back from, you know, I think just go back to the basics and the fundamentals and just like basically like see how I do it. I go to – I don't look at my good plays through the season. I have a cut up. So throughout each week I cut up myself and I remember my bad plays and I go back and I go like, yo, what can I do different right here, you know, you know, and stuff like a kickoff and punt return and just different stuff, even a linebacker when I played and just, you know, I just think we need to go back and self, you know, have a self-assessment and be like, yo, and, and kind of like be real with each other. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, how can we do better at this? How can we be better at man coverage? How can we better be better at cutting over? How can we be better with our communication? I mean, and I just think, you know, all 53 of us, you know, and the new rookies that are, are going to come in, I think we just have to be honest, you know what I'm saying? And just, you know, um, I think we can only control what we can control as players. And I think, you know, Coach um, McDermott, you know, Frazier, I think they're going to be very, very, very critical and, you know, with themselves, you know, being honest with themselves. And I think, just honestly, I just think it goes back to being real. 
and just being like straight up blunt and being up front, be like, yo, if, if like I tell the guys all the time, if I suck, you, you let me know I suck. Cause if not, excuse my language, if I'm not bringing my best shit, that's what we say on the Buffalo Bills, bringing your best shit. If you're not bringing your best shit, why are you out here? So basically, I think we all, coaching staff, 53 people on the team, including and it, even the Peace Squad guys, you know what I'm saying? I think we all need to come together like, yo, what happened? How can we get better? And just being raw, being real. You know, none of this, oh, man, yo, we have a next season. No, none of that pity, pity stuff. Like, just be, let's get straight to it. You know what I'm saying? Because our, our relationships are kind of like, let's be honest, it's kind of like a marriage. Let's be real. Like, what I do affects you and what you do affects me. So let's get let's get to the bottom of this and let's be better. So that, that's what I got. I mean, I think that's just fantastic life advice, right? I mean, if you're... Yeah, parent, are you are you gonna tell your kid like everything is everything is amazing and phenomenal and fantastic and you're the best? You, I mean, like, tough love is needed in yeah, life man. in general, isn't it? I mean, is that something that you kind of uh, subscribe to? Like that that tough love is it's gonna make you better as a human being and as a football player. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I come up, I, man. I come, I come from a single mother home. So, you know, project and living the projects and. Uh, my mom had my brother when she was 16 and had me when she was 19. So um, I've had a lot of tough love growing up, you know what I'm saying? And my mom being on me, like, she always calls me the golden child. I don't think my mom has ever told me I've had a good football game. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Like, I love tough love. And, I, and like, you know, I think I'm, I'm, I'm becoming one of the leaders on, you know, on the team and stuff like that. And, like, tough love. You got you to gotta know how to kind of like um, give tough love to certain people. You got to kind of be hard on people, soft, tough love. And like, it's, it's just all about different, you know, approaches to tough love. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. So I thrive off of tough love. I mean, if you talk to Bob Babbage, he'll tell you I thrive off of tough love. And, uh, you know, um, yeah. Different players uh, respond to different types of coaching too. I mean, there's some guys that – they need to be coddled and they need to be having their ego stroked. And then there's the other end of the spectrum. That's, I guess you're on that other end, right? Where you, you kind of want to yeah. be told yeah. if, if something's not right. So your, your upbringing, what was that really like uh, growing up single parent household? Uh, what did uh, it look like? What did it feel like all that? It, it, it really kind of was, I really didn't know like the sacrifices my mom made throughout like the time and like, you know, I kind of went without sometimes, but like my mom busted her ass to to give me what I what I wanted and what I needed. You know, when I like uh, I was it was one Christmas uh, I think I was like seven eight years old. It was like it was a candy green mongoose. All the kids at my school used to like ride like a candy green mongoose with the black pegs and the black wheels and the you know tires are obviously black. It was sick, and I begged my mom. I begged my mom, but I did not know my mom was working three jobs just to get me that bike. I didn't know that. I didn't know that until like I was like in high school or like I was in high school or like probably college. I didn't know like the work that she was putting in and I got it one day. And I, when I got it, I was like, okay, like, but like now, like I understand like the sacrifices you got to make to like basically survive in this life because like, no one cares. Like the life, life goes on. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's be real. You know, I'm undrafted. Like, if I didn't go out and perform, you know, for a little bit of my rookie year, they're like, oh wow, he can really play. And if I didn't perform, life would have known. It would have picked a different guy. You know what I'm saying? Just that's how life works. So um, me growing up, I mean, that's that's basically like the story, you know. And then my grandmother was like, my grandmother was kind of like my my dad because I didn't have a dad growing up like I taught myself how to shave I taught myself how to you know do different like manly things that you know we do as men you know and, so, and stuff like that so uh yeah I basically that's that's the two I had and my grandma was working two jobs too so <laughs> what jobs were they working your mom and your grandma so my grandma ever since I was little she was um a janitor at the city hall she was a janitor all over and she was also a bus driver. My mom 
worked like like little jobs here and there, just trying to scrape. You know, uh, if it was McDonald's, if it was like Sam's Club, it was like, you know, like those franchises like that. You know what I'm saying? So they, those girls have to scrape, man. <laughs> I mean, as a NFL player, kind of on the, you know, as you said, undrafted season to season fringes. I mean, you're, you're, you're going to be on, you're on these one-year deals. You're, you're fighting and clawing to make the team to get snaps on special teams, waiting for that opportunity to bust. Is that all motivation? I mean, right. I mean, the way you grew up, yeah. your mom, your grandma, what they went through, I'm, I'd imagine that's kind of the foundation for uh, surviving yourself. In the yeah. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I think, I think, you know, everyone knows my story from like my rookie year to, to where I am now, you know, my rookie year, me being, you know, suspended is my testimony. I love talking about it from my rookie year for being, um, for being suspended to being accused of stuff. And, um, to hear now you go back to my rookie year, people would never thought I would have been year four and possibly potentially coming in and being a top three linebacker on the, one of the best teams in the NFL. So I just think my testimony goes with like, you know what I'm saying? Like, believing in yourself, you know what I'm saying? Like, I bet on myself all the time. And, you know, Tremaine and Matt always, you know, they laugh when I say this. And I, like, I go, like, I'm the best linebacker. Because, like, to be in the NFL, you have to think you're the best, you know what I'm saying, at what you do. Or you're – or like, because guys have egos, man. And, like, you know, if you don't have, like, a secure ego, your ego is kind of going to get smashed in and, you, and you're not going to be as confident as you can be. And we all joke around, like, you know, you know, Matt, Matt, Milano don't say much, but like, you know, we just all joke around who's like pros and cons and stuff like that. We have a good group, man. It's just, you know, um, and, and AJ Klein, you know, has helped me a lot, you know, just with, you um, know, I call him, I call him old man. And just for like different stuff, you know, and uh, growing and yeah. So, I mean, being undrafted, you know, uh, I think me and Cam Lewis are the only ones left in that group. That right. Yeah, me and Cam Lewis are only ones left um, in that group. And um, I'm proud of Cam. Cam's in the same boat as me. We're, we're scraping, scrapping. And, and every time we get, we put it on film, you know. We kind of show, like, yo, like, we can really play with the best of the best. So, you know, hats off to Cam Lewis, too. What was that period really like for you when your name is in the headlines and TMZ and you're suspended and everything can just go away at that point, right? I mean, you're, yeah. you could have been a never was. Um, yeah. For people who don't don't really know what what happened then, what, what can you say? Um, I mean, let's be honest. Everyone pretty much knows, you know, what happened. But um, I think, I think just who I was previously, and like you know, doing like um, character uh, witnesses, and like you know, people, you know, um, kind of like my reputation, kind of like helped me, like get through that, you know, situation because of like. You know, I've never had any problems of behavior. I've never, you know, you ask my coaches, my A&M coaches to my high school coaches, like, I'm always nice. I'm, I'm never, you know, in the middle of crap. I might have a loud mouth and, you know, I might joke around late a little bit too much. But, you know, I, I think me being who I, who I was and, you know, um, a lot of people knowing me of who I am, of, you know, just, you know, wanting to help out and stuff like that. I think that really helped me a lot. And, you know, to the point where it was, it was no question of like, what? Like, this is, you know what I'm saying? So I, I'm just, I'm just glad that, you know, I stayed, I stayed, you know, um, with my true values and my true self. And, you know, and it's kind of, it's kind of cool to see like people really like kind of change once they kind of, kind of like um oh you you're this and that you're this and that but like I mean I haven't been in any I haven't been in any trouble ever like you know what I'm saying and, and it sucks that happened you know it sucks that you know um it kind of came down on me hard and you know being accused of something that you know um that you know deep down inside that you know um you didn't do and everyone else is trying to tarnish your name it kind of, um, it kind of sucks to be real with you. You know what I'm saying? Just, um, just every day, you know, um, I had, I had to still go in the facility and I was still the Mike linebacker of the rookie mini camp. So I was still, 
calling out everything, still learning a new defense, still not letting it affect me inside the, you know, white lines, you know, and, and you know, and, and, it, and it was to a point where I want to keep it honest with you. I stayed up 72 hours, 72 hours, because I was just so afraid of losing something I worked for over basically a lie. I'm be honest with you. And um, I stayed up 72 hours and I still have rookie minicamp. You know, I still have rookie minicamp and I didn't sleep. I still had to go and work out and perform and still be like the Mike linebacker of the, of, of the, of the rookie minicamp without showing any signs of it phasing me. Man. I stayed up 72 hours straight, you know. 72 hours straight, you were awake? I was awake. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. So all that was going and, down right then when you're trying to make the team in rookie minicamp. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, well, it was after rookie minicamp, we came back from training camp. This is when I, 72 hours, I, I couldn't sleep. We were at St. John's, uh, St. John Fisher's. Um, uh, we had to wake up early and stuff like that. I, I just, I, I, I'm being honest with you. Like I didn't sleep for 72 hours. And I, the reason I slept was because I think, um, I think I talked to my grandma or my mom. I can't recall which one. And they kind of like soothed me down. Like you need basically like, yo, you need to sleep. Cause like you still have an opportunity to go out there and do something that no one's ever did, you know, in our family. And, basically in my city where I'm from, Franklin, Tennessee. So um, I think my character speaks for myself now. And I, you know, I never came out and made a statement and I never came out and tried to tell my side of the story because my character speaks for itself. So, you know, that, that's the story of that. And yeah, that's it. Man. That can't be easy when your name is, is just taken off and people are drawing their conclusions and in your head, you know what happened. Um, and you, you don't say anything and you're fighting for a job. Yeah. But, and, and you're a rookie. <laughs> right. Right. You're a rookie and you're undrafted. You're, and I'm undrafted. Like, like you telling me the odds of me being here, then the next year, then the next year I'm going to my second year. Um, I didn't. I barely played the first game. Then the second game, the Miami game with Tremaine and Matt got hurt. I started. That was my first game playing linebacker since college. And then I go out there, two t two TFLs, two passes defended, like eight tackles. Like, I think that I was just so proud of myself. You know what I'm saying? Because it speaks for itself. Did you have to defend yourself to like McDermott and Bean and the team? Like, did you? No, have, I did not do any of that. I did not. Bean and McDermott was behind me because. I mean, let's be honest. You know how how many background checks they do during the draft. Oh yeah, they do plenty. They do hundreds. Like they, they they talk to at least twenty people from all the way back from high school to like. And no one had. I mean, I don't know, but like, well, they no one had any bad thing to say about me other than I, I'm a goofball. I'm a, I joke around way a little bit too much. <laughs> you know, you know, it, you know. Other than that, you know, being being was behind me. It was like, hey we're going to be behind you. McDermott, you know, was behind me. And it's just, even Bob Babbage was behind me. I just, I just think my character, you know, and, you know, spoke for itself. And I'm just so, I'm thankful. I'm still here and I'm thankful that, you know, I, I get to contribute to, you know, a Super Bowl, a potential Super Bowl team. So like, that, that shit feels good. <laughs> yeah. How do you like living in Western New York now that it's been a few years? Um, we, we got into it a little bit before we hit record, I, I know you're, yeah. uh, you're into cooking. You're still here. Uh, what's, what's life really like for you? And, and what about the area kind of keeping you around? Um, so my girlfriend's from here. That's what's kind of keeping me around. She's like, she won't let me leave. I'm kidding. But like, um, I'm that still here. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm still uh, here. Um, I help, I help chef Darian cook, uh, about two times a week. Um, you know, different things he needs, like plates, um, even, you know, try to cook. Um, he, he, he owns the plating society, um, in Larkin. Um, other than that, man, I'm, I'm gaming. I'm a big gamer. So I have my PC here. I can't travel on my PC. So that's another reason why I'm here in Buffalo still. <laughs> uh, 
other than that, man, I mean, Western New York is a good, it's a good spot, man. Like you don't, you don't have, I mean, Buffalo people are crazy, but it's not like, you know, stuck up. Like, it's not like, you know, those other cities that, you know, people are just like big family here. You know what I'm saying? Like people want to get along as long as people have food and beer. That's all they do here. <laughs> they're so and they're so happy. And, and, and I think that's cool because like, it goes back in, you know, life situations. You don't need much to be happy. You know what I'm saying? Like materialistic stuff, it can only go so far. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I love, I love, I love Buffalo. I'm not going to lie to you. Other than sometimes the cold, but I got used to it. I've been, I've been taking my shirt off and stuff. So it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. We all saw you walking in. I, I don't know. That had to, it looked like you were maybe losing your mind a little bit, just walking in without a shirt to, to like, I forget what the temperature was with the wind chill. It was definitely in the negatives, right? That Patriots. Game. It was definitely in negatives. Just shout out to yeah. uh, Vernon Butler for a $500 bet. Oh yeah. What was that about? He said, so we walk in, it was a night game, right? It was a yeah. night game. And he's like, man, it's cold as out there. And I was like, man, it ain't that cold. He was like, prove it. I was like, for how much? He goes, 500. I said, 500 to walk down there? I said, I took it all right away. I was like, I'm walking down. And he gave me the money. 500 bucks just to walk, what, from the parking lot to the locker room? Yeah, man. I said, you signed me up seven days a week, twice on Sundays for that. And he paid up? <laughs> Did he pay up right away? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he better pay up with that contract he got. <laughs> man that's uh i mean it couldn't have been a walk in the park though you had to have been freezing oh, even though it's, it's not long but like that when that wind hits you guys it's, it's hard to describe like living here and then living in wisconsin for a while it's just like a bunch of knives oh, yeah. stabbing your skin anything it's exposed it just it just it's what's worse wisconsin or here i'd say the cold is worse in Wisconsin. The wind, because it's just, it's a miserable, icy, windy, Ooh. seasonal depression, cold. I mean, there was one winter out there. It might have been 2013. I mean, it, I feel like we didn't thaw out until June. They, we had, I mean, one time, they, they played the 49ers in a wild card game. And the next day, I don't know how they would have played a football game. I mean, it was like negative 40-something wind chill. We <laughs> I remember Jameis Winston in Florida State. They're in the national championship game. Me and my buddy, we went to a bar. We we're the only people out in Green Bay, Wisconsin at a bar. Everybody was just like hunkered down. We had to let our cars run for like 40 minutes before we could even leave because it was the cars just had to get revved up. I mean, it was it was freezing. I, so the, the snow though is worth is worse here. Way worse. Like yeah, the, the, yeah. the lake effect, white out. And I'd almost take the cold. I mean, you've probably driven in some whiteouts by now, right? Like it's, yeah, it's scary. It can be pretty scary. It is scary. It is um, scary. Uh, but ugh, it puts hair on your chest, as they say. Green, We're tougher, allegedly. Wisconsin sounds awful, though. <laughs> it's pretty bad. It's pretty. What's the nickname they call it? The cold tundra. What? What is it? Yeah, the frozen tundra. Frozen tundra. Okay. I mean, I would think as a player, like when you're a free agent, you've got to decide like on a team. I mean, fans probably get caught up into, okay, who's playing quarterback and how good is the team? But I mean, you're probably thinking about this kind of stuff. Like, where do I want to live during the season? Yeah. Um, that, I mean, a lot of people think about that. I mean, that's why, that's why some teams that like, they know that like, they like people won't come for the weather or like, you know, as in Buffalo, like, you know, it's not like a fancy spot. It's not like a bright spot, but like it has the best facilities. The organization is amazing. You get, you, you, you literally one phone call away from getting anything you want, you know, groceries or, you know, the, the, the people in the Bills organization are like the best, like bar none, like anything you need, like they have a person for it. Yeah. It, it's insane. I've never seen anything like it. I was gonna say because you chose to resign, so I mean, you're, you're these thoughts are running through your head like, where do I want to be? And it was pretty quick. Yeah. Not a lot of guys are yeah. resigning places right now. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. My agent called me. He was like, "Hey, do you want to just go up and sign?" I was like, "Sure." I mean, 
if it, if I'm getting a raise, I don't care how much the raise is, as long as I get a raise, I'm grateful. You know, I, <laughs> yeah. So, especially where you come weird. from, you know, I so just just back to that world, that life. Um, what else kind of made you? Any experiences growing up that really kind of made the real Tyrell Dotson? When you think back to it. Oh man, 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 man. Um, just growing up, you know, I had, you know, some buddies are still my buddies, buddy, man. I remember my sophomore, uh, maybe my sophomore or junior year of high school, you know, I'm sitting at the table, you know, um, uh, I'm literally sitting at the table like this, I'm, or not as nice, but um, in my mom's crib and I was in high school and my, my head coach calls me, Brian Rector calls me, it's like, Hey, bub. I was like, what's up? I was like, you never call me. Like, what's up? He was like, these grades, man. Like, if you don't, if you don't fix these grades, man, like, you're not going to be, you're not, he's like, he told me, like, you're not going to be shit. Like, 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 Tyrell, you have the potential to be one of the best ever. Like, you can do it, but you just have to, like, surround yourself by, around the good people. Um, you gotta, you gotta try a little bit harder, a lot harder. You just gotta basically be yourself. And you know what I'm saying? So I remember that conversation and I was like, man, like I thought about it, you know, just like, what route do I want to take? Do I want to be the first person in my family to go to college? <laughs> or do I want to be like everyone else in my community that, you know, you know, are in the streets, dealing with drugs, dealing with gang violence, and I said, freak it, I'm going to give it a try. And people, like, certain, my certain group of my friends, like, you know what I'm saying, kind of like on the streets, they're like, no way. People try this all the time here in our community. Only one person, Fred Lane Sr., only one person did it out of Franklin. Only one person. No way you can do it. And I was like, yo, y'all y'all are my, basically my boys, like, now you're telling me I can't do something. And ever since then, every single time people tell me I can't do it, if it triggers me, like every single time. And that's why, like, I think I'm still here because, like, I have an underdog mentality, you know, stuff like that. And, like, people always say, like, it's kind of funny, like, a lot of people say, like, oh, like, first rounders that don't play as well, I like they're and they're like, oh, I'm an underdog now. Like, y'all sleeping on me. Like, oh, like, you don't know what an underdog is, man. Like, yeah, yeah. you don't know, man. I've been scraping my whole life. I've been scraping. I've been, I've been, I've been just trying to make a name for myself. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, I, I, I say, I, I say, no, you know, I hung out with a different group. I met one of my best friends and I called, um, I called my brother now, his name is Nick Bell. His dad is, was a doctor and he was a chief medical officer at HCA Healthcare at the time. And he kind of like basically took me under his wing. And like, I remember our first conversation, he was like, yo, you're, you're not going to be hanging out of my house if your grades aren't right. I remember him telling me that, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to help you if your grades aren't right. And ever since then, every like ever since then, I was like a 3.0 student or higher. It's just, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, I, I, crazy story, man. Crazy stories. People would hear, uh, you know, Franklin, tennis. I don't know a thing about that city, right? I don't, I don't know a thing. I wouldn't think that life is like that there. Yeah. But it, but it really is. I mean, all your friends are, yeah. they're getting into that stuff and how easy would it have been for you to just start dealing drugs, joining gangs, being a never was? Oh, easy. Easy. I mean, I, I just literally, I'll, I'll walk outside and just, it's there. It's right there. You know, we lived in, um, so um, we lived in Antioch, t well, my mom, I, so I stayed with my grandma and I used to go stay with my mom sometimes. She lived in Antioch, Tennessee. Antioch, you know, is, a lot of a lot of violence and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, I'm I'm glad I chose the, the right route. And you know, um, I had a couple like the so my group of friends kind of split, and some went with me and some didn't. And the ones that went with me are like still here with me, man. And still like encouraging me, still reminding me. And and like let's be honest, those dudes aren't you know where they want to be in life. You know, some of my boys are still at home, and, you know, with their moms and stuff like that. But they still 
um, have that bigger picture vision because of like me, because of like me giving them that vision that they can also do it too. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I just, I, I just want to be a motivation to like the people like that come from nothing, basically that just because you come, just because you come from nothing doesn't mean you can't be something, you know what I'm saying? And just like, you can't feel, you can't, you can't feel sorry for yourself, like yourself either to you. Like you can't, you got to go out there and work. You know, nothing's going to be handed to you. So did, did you have something to strive for? Was there a, a, a person? Was there an inspiration? Like what, when, when this is all, all you know, and you, you kind of get, you can get um, numb to it, to that lifestyle. And this is just how it's going to be. I don't know what, what like just pulled you out of that. What made you think, okay, there's something better out there. Um, I didn't like when I chose to go the like the better route. I didn't know how my path was going to be because I didn't really have a mentor. Like I didn't, I didn't know of anyone. Your dad just wasn't around, or no, I never had. I'm, my dad, my my, bio, my biological father was never around. I just, I just, I. I was kind of like, uh, it was kind of like blind trust. You know what I'm saying? It was to the point, like, I couldn't afford, like, other training, like, other kids have nowadays, like, and stuff like that. And I used to just Google, you know, uh, different stuff, like, how to get better at this, this, and that, you know. Um, it's just, it, it's crazy. I kind of became my own man. Like, I, I was my own dad, and I and I taught myself my own things, and, and I learned how to shave. I taught myself how to shave. I think I was in, like, I, eight, eighth grade, ninth grade, like, yeah, really? around like, yeah, around like eighth and ninth grade, you know, I was, you know, I taught myself how to shave and, you know, different stuff like that because like my mom always told me I was a golden child. So I had to kind of be the man of the household with having an older brother, you know what I'm saying? So, and, you know, it, it, it's crazy, man. I, I, I don't I don't know how I'm here. I don't I don't I don't know. Like I just stuck with it. I stuck the course and I went all the way to Texas and all the way from from my family and I kinda like bet on myself, you know what I'm saying? So it's you hear you hear this a lot, but like to live it, right? And we shouldn't just brush it off as, oh, that's a cliche. I've heard that. Like to, to live it. I mean like Isaiah McKenzie, we, we did a show with him at Go Along. He's talking about a bullet, like literally grazing him. I mean, if, if, yeah, if, if it comes if from a, a rough, yeah. I mean, if it's a, a half of an inch, um, there is no Isaiah McKenzie. It's yeah. you're seeing the difference between life and death, that thin line between life and death. Yeah, up, man. Up close, it's a little different than Larkin Square, you know, downtown Buffalo, right? Yeah, yeah. man. Larkin, Larkin is awesome. I'm in here, nice apartment, man. I'm blessed, dude. I just. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually about to get some property back in Nashville, you know, basically where I'm from. And, you know, it's kind of crazy, you know, me growing up. I was like, man, I never, like, I can never afford, like, downtown Nashville, you know, a condo downtown Nashville. But, you know, uh, I guess God had other plans for me, so. It's the best city on earth. I mean, Nashville, Tennessee. Really? For my money. Oh, you tell yeah. me that. I haven't really been back full time, you know, because I've been in college and really haven't had an off season work. Like I haven't had anywhere to like really stay. So this is like- Do you like be country music? Are, are you a uh, country boy at all? Uh, Dawson kind of, you know what I'm saying? Dawson kind of made me a little country. Uh, I can tolerate it, T. I can't really like listen to it fully. <laughs> I can tolerate it. I can tolerate it. Oh man, what are you into then? What, what kind of music do you like? Uh, dude, I'm a big Drake fan. Drake, big Drake. Okay. Drake, man. He's not too like, not too like, hip hop ish. Not too pop ish. He's like right in the middle. Well, you do know if the Bills win a Super Bowl, Drake will be, you know, he'll probably be at the parade because he just is a bandwagoner, <laughs> right? He just yeah. likes whoever's winning. So <laughs> he'll, he'll he'll associate Toronto with Buffalo somehow. No, he is some, man. He's got some good music. I'm with you there. It's good. I love Drake, man. But if we win a Super Bowl, no bandwagons, man. We stick yeah. with the people. Tell tell them to stick with Ben on the Rams and o, Odell like he did. Tell them to stick with it. 
Yeah, what would happen when you guys win a Super Bowl? I mean, you live downtown. What's going to happen? I'm not going to lie, dude. I've heard stories of, like, fans saying what they're going to do when <laughs> the Bills win a Super Bowl. I would say, you know, the cops probably need to just just, just go home for <laughs> just go home for the night. <laughs> like, for two weeks, the cops <laughs> – the Buffalo needs to ship like ship the cops somewhere else because Buffalo's gonna go crazy. I've heard so many stories of people are gonna do. I'm like, yo, you're you crazy. have like pe- people have told you what they're gonna do. Yeah, man. Like people are saying they're gonna go on like a week straight bender of just straight alcohol, pizza, wings. Like, like people are like, I don't do it. <laughs> I've had one dude say I let anybody do anything to me. If the Bills win the Super Bowl, I'm like, yo, like, man, Ma- Bills Mafia is crazy, man. Yeah, I can't imagine, you know, because you've got two generations. You've got a generation that suffered through four straight Super Bowl losses, and you have a generation, you know, their sons, their daughters, nephews, nieces that have that suffered through the drought, you know, 17 years in a row without the playoffs. And now you have kind of this where it's – you've got a team. I mean, I'm watching Rams – Bengals thinking what everybody else is thinking. The Bills are better than both of these teams. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the it's kind of like, you know, I guess people are, are glutton are, are glutton for punishment around here where at some point there will be a release. Like if they ever do win a championship, even if it's just like an AFC championship, I think you're going to see that effect probably in, in the city. Yeah, I agree, man. Yeah. We got to get there, man. We got to, we got to get there, man. We got to stop beating ourselves first, bro. And yeah, we gotta get. What's there. coming for you personally? Like, what what are your uh, your goals, expectations? What do you expect out of yourself? I mean, it's early. We're sitting here. It's it's February twenty fourth. We got we got got a few months. But um, have you have you put yeah. your mind there to what you want in twenty twenty two? Yeah, I mean, I wanna um, I wanna be, uh, you know, continue to grow in special teams. You know, uh, that's something I think. You know, I think all all people in my position need to you know be be the best at. And I think we have an amazing group. And I think, like, Tyler Matakavich and, you know, Saran Neal have just showed me so much. And I think, like, I became a good special teams player. I say I'm a special teams player in the NFL. And, I, and, I, and people take that lightly. But I don't think, like, people should take that lightly because, like, Saran Neal is making $3 million on special teams. Like, people – this is how people eat. This is how people are, like, feeding their families. And just I want to compete for, like – that top linebacker spot, you know, that top three linebacker spot, you know, I, 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 I genuinely think I have the skills, I have the traits, I have, you know, the speed, I have, you know, um, things that um, I think being a McDermott like, you know, and um, I just got to put it all together. You know, I just, I can't talk about it. I got to be about it. I got to put it on film and I got to show them like, yo, like I'm kind of a, a, a diamond in the rough that you found, you know, yeah. and, you know, I think they, I, I, I've talked to Bean and McDermott several times and they believe I can do it, you know, and I get texts from like Dan Morgan, I remember Dan Morgan and, you know, Joe Sheen, like those guys yeah. really believed in me and, um, you know, Dan. Was it Dan who found you or, or did he push for you? I don't know, man. I just, yeah. I'm not, I'm not for sure, but, you know, Dan tells me I'm, I have legit starter, starter, starter ability. Well, shit, he'd you know, know, right? Yeah, <laughs> One yeah, of the best yeah, linebackers yeah. of his era. Yeah, yeah and um, that means a lot, you know. Um, Dan, 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 and Joe really helped me a lot here, you know, as like being a man, you know, figuring out things how I want to be. But I think I can be a, a, a special talent in this league, and you know, you know, sometimes like Lorenzo Alexander, it takes you to until year twelve to get a to get starting, you know, Pro Bowl and stuff like that. But like, you know, I'm blessed and I'm very like. I'm grateful to be in this position because like where I come from, this is unheard of. You know what I'm saying? So there's nobody you know, else from where you're from doing yeah. anything like this then. Yeah. For real. So, so I'm just, I always, I always tell people, you know, even like I say young guys, I'm 23 still going my year four, but I tell them just to run your own race. Don't look, don't look to the side, just run your race. And I think, I think that's what I've been doing well. You know what I'm saying? Same with Cam Lewis. I bring Cam Lewis because, we're kind of close in this because like we're the undrafted guys. And I think, you know, um, I, I have the ability and I have the chance to take over that top three linebacker spot. And, and that's my goal. And then, you know, going from a top three linebacker spot to, you know, 
um, maybe here or maybe somewhere else, you know, maybe down the line, you know, I become a full-time starter, you know, that's my plan and that's my dream. And, you know, and that's what I'm going to work for, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Being an undrafted guy, it does make you different. I would think you, you, you think yeah. differently day to day when you yeah. report to, uh, to one bill's drive there in orchard park, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It's just, uh, you kind of, you kind of can't do the, I mean, I'm a, I'm gonna keep it real with you. I might get in trouble for this. I don't care. But um, when, you, when you're undrafted, you kind of, you can't do the same stuff that, you know, the first round, second round, third round draft pick can do. Like, let's be honest. Like you, I mean, it's called politics, you know what I'm saying? But, I, I think the Bills do a good job of not play, doing politics. I think they play the best players. Whoever has, has the hot hand, that's why you see some guys down one week and up. That's, you know what I'm saying? Moderna does a good job of, like, whoever has the hot hand, who's ever the best player at that time will play. And so every day you got to bring your best stuff because the Bills will play the best players. So – yeah. Unless it's Isaiah McKenzie, you know, after that Patriots game. Sorry, I don't want to get you in trouble. That's uh, We talked about that previously. So. No, we're good. You're right. You're right. right. Hey, Isaiah, you're I, mean, <laughs> I, mean, just, I mean, let's be honest. We kind of we kind of changed our offense a little bit. Yeah. You remember, remember, you remember like like the, like the, I guess, like the towards the end of the season, we were like I formation. Reggie Gilliam was in. Um, That's true. You know, you know what I'm right. saying? So, like, that – that the Cole Beasley body, the, like it's the, a balance. Like, yeah, the running and passing that time of year, you know, and and that's what we, that's what we had struggle with on both sides of the ball, running and passing. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying? It's playing. It's Coach Verdam always talks about playing like complimentary football, and we struggled at that sometimes. You know what I'm saying? And it's it, it's kind of like you know with everything like if offense scores, defense got to stop them like. You know, just different stuff like that. You know, um, Isaiah's a baller. Though. I think Isaiah has a chance to be a top a top slot guy in the league. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just – he needs to just keep growing. I think him being behind probably one of the best slots of all time, like top 10, Cole Beasley, I think being behind him has helped Isaiah a lot. You know what I'm saying? So – and Isaiah brings another thing to take punt return, kick return. Maybe he's one of the best punt return, kick returners in the league. And I, you know, so I think I, I think Isaiah's I think he's right here and his siblings like up here. So yeah. It's gonna be an interesting off season for him, for a lot of the guys. It's it's tougher to keep a team together. You know, like the you guys busted through as a team, you pay the quarterback so much money to go around. It gets it gets tough. I mean, I feel like that's an opportunity for a guy like yourself to all right, yes. hey, I'm here one year, like let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, we'll see what happens. But uh, right, where where can people find you? What are you up to this off season? What do you want people to know, Tyrell? Um, I just want people to know that I'm I'm working to come in. You know, be the top three linebacker spot. You know, um, I'm kind of up to you know um, trying to figure out different ways. You know, just to up the the professionalism side of you know of of myself and you know me being a young guy. Um, you know, I'm going to be traveling a little bit here and there. You know. Me and my boys, me and my girlfriend here and there, but um, I'm really, I'm really, I, I think this off season is is a very important off season, not only for myself, but also for the Buffalo Bills because yeah. they always say there's a certain window that you have to take advantage of, and right. yo, we gotta take advantage of it. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, which is know. refreshing to hear because I feel like out of that game, it was. Oh, Allen and Mahomes are going to play each other for the next decade in this game. Tell that to Dan Marino. Tell that to Aaron Rodgers. Tell that to so many special quarterbacks, right? The, you don't know when that window is going to shut. It's open yeah. right now. So 2022 is massive yeah. in the history of the Buffalo Bills. Because you know how it is. You start winning. Everyone gets their, you know, everyone gets eyes on them. Yep. Oh, so people start feeling egos. People's like, oh, I'm going to go get paid. Like, and people start leaving and people, you know what I'm saying, aren't, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of hard to keep a certain same group, you know, together yes. for a long period of time, especially when, you, I mean, you pay the quarterback. The port, quarterback has to get paid. So you got to take a little bit from other positions and you don't have, you know, as big as a, a, a big of 
a puzzle as you, you think could have had. You know what I'm saying? So it's a chess game, dog. It's a chess game. Hey, let's do it again. This is uh, this is fantastic, Tyrell. It's great to have you. Um, we yeah, can talk bro. forever, man. Let's let's make it a regular thing. Let's do it. Let's do it. You let me know. Um, even if, if you want to do it, um, so I'll be back in Nashville full time, like in like uh, late March for like two months. But when I come back, or you want to do Zoom until I come back, you do it in person. We can, you know, we can talk about other things that's happening around the league. Aaron Rodgers is a hot topic right now. I mean, he is. You know, a bunch of stuff. You know, so let's I mean, do it. Let's whip around the league with with Tyrell Dotson, right? Let's. Yeah, uh, nobody cares yeah. what I have to say about Aaron Rodgers. They want to hear your take. Yeah, I mean, I think I think Aaron Rodgers is kind of like on the cusp of a, of like I'm kind of getting older. We're kind of not winning games. I'm not. I don't think he's. I don't think he's happy enough with winning MVPs. I think he wants the Super Bowl. I think he wants to. Secretly, I think he's. I think he's in competition with Tom Brady. I mean. I mean, Tom Brady has like what six or seven Super Bowls, and it's kind of hard to compete with that right now. How old Aaron Rodgers is, but I think Aaron Rodgers is kind of like, yo, if you don't surround me with a bunch of dogs, I'm out of here. And they gave him a great defense. They scored ten yeah. points at home against yeah. Jimmy Garoppolo, Tyrell. Yeah, and I and and I think um, I remember I, I actually watched some of it, and he said that. The way the way he dealt with the COVID situation, basically said the way he dealt with the COVID situation wasn't the best way because he did not know that his actions, or he was numb to it, he was insensitive to his actions of how it would affect other people. So, so it's good to I hear think, an, an admission of sorts out of him there, right? Yeah, yeah. It's and, as close and, as you'll get. And, you know, <laughs> and, you know, it just I just don't think that we like people like him, they have a huge platform. And kinda of, kinda of when like or Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes like anything you say like it's not gonna be a perfect perfect saying. Like you said if you said like oh I like M Ms people are like M Ms suck. Why do you like M Ms? You're Aaron Rodgers, why are you eating M Ms? That's bad for you. So I just think people have to understand the platform that they're on, you know, and they can't really say uh, um, crazy stuff because like the whole world's listening. Well, you keep letting it rip because your Twitter account is, you know, I'd say top five on the team, creeping into top ten, top fifteen at least in the NFL. Yeah, a lot man. of fun. So don't hold back. It's good. Yeah, it's man. I, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I think I tweeted something today. Um, one of the coach guys, where um, the coach guy was like. Um, the Pro Bowl, he was like eating with a bunch of Colts. I was like, "Give me your Pro Bowl, then." Like, I take it. Oh yeah, Kenny Moore <laughs> said something. Yeah, yeah. I was like, "I take it." <laughs> <laughs> Give it to me. <laughs> awesome. Hey, let's do it again soon, um, everybody. Please check out Tyrell Dots and follow him. All the accounts. We're, we're gonna make this a regular thing, so we'll, yeah, we'll see you again Tyler. soon. I'm sure. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me on. This is awesome. I haven't, oh. I, don't, I don't, I don't get to talk much like this, you know, to people, you know what I'm saying like that, but I love what you're doing, bro. Oh no. Thank, thank you for going there. It's, it's just great to, uh, to learn everything we can about a guy like yourself. Yeah. Super interesting. Yeah. Yes, sir. Right, we'll catch you next time.